Pittman. I write the songs, I mean I write the stuff and I, I come up with the ideas. These two um, are um, privy to more to, to, to me than anybody else has been. I, uh, I trust them as people, you know, they're good musicians and, I, and I'm waiting to hear something different from them every now and again. I started out with a lot of the stuff beforehand, there's quite a lot of the songs and stuff that have been in kind of germination already, uh, uh, but have happened. But there's a relationship with the three of us in how sort of a, 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 a song develops. If you're coming with me to the sculpture workshop, leave your son behind. I'm just following my guts really. It's uh, entrancing, it's fucking joyous, it's a wonderful um, experience. I've just been up there and feeling, feeling the, the excitement, the danger of it all. With my secret cloak of invisibility, I can see you, but you can't see me. When I go to the co-op, when I go to the store, you can't see me anymore. The stuff that's in the songs is, is is from the stuff that come, you know, that's uh, that I've absorbed and held in for a long, long time. And now, 50 years, you know, four or five years ago, it's it's coming out now. It's been sort of refined and stuff, and, and come out in in the songs and in the. The, whatever they are, songs, words, performance. I was born in a place called Drumcairn in County Leitrim, uh, in the west of Ireland. And when I was four, my mum and dad decided they had to get to England because there was no money over in Ireland. And we moved over to Leeds. We moved to where I'm living now, actually, but they moved to Armley. And we were in this, this little back to back on a main road. and. Just the shock of seeing tarmac and brick and stone and and millions of people after being sort of out in the quiet of the green of, of Ireland, the stillness of Ireland, you know, apart from a cow, you know, mooing and stuff, and then to suddenly end up you know, everywhere there was noise and there was fucking cars going whoosh, 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 past the house, and it was just frightening and confusing for a little while, and just there was no light it was so dark and smoggy and and dirty that was the, the oldest i had to sort of make inroads into this world and kind of get things done i felt i was i was kind of the flag bearer for the family and i had to sort of uh, make sure that we got treated well us little band of gallows it was a it was a warm childhood you know there was lots of lots of fights and lots of squabbling and, but lots of affection. It's say my words are true. There was no meeting on the minds. He tell me what to do. And then I'd go and listen to Santana.
of school I was just happy to be out the door and, um, but then I spent a few years just uh, doing fairly awful jobs finally after the third or fourth job that f blew up in my face um, my friends you know I said go to our college you know, so I, I went for an interview at Bradford Art College and so I became an artist that's what I thought I've joined the artist club and I went and bought some uh, some funny foreign cigarettes and became an artist. This is Bradford Playhouse or the Joseph Priestley Theatre. It's an old rundown uh, haunted theatre. I was offered an exhibition and and it's here, you know, and it's still kind of it's still not open officially, which is a weird one. But people still come in to see the exhibition. I'm, uh, I'm proud, pleased and proud as well, uh, with, of the stuff. Because uh, some of it was really hard work. I mean, well, to, to sort of, uh, and it was just similar to like being up on stage, you know, you have to kind of throw yourself, you have to, leap, you know, take a leap, and a lot of it I was taking leaps, you know, and I thought, yeah, that's good, that's, I can close this chapter on my life now, I've done this, and it's, it's done, the, the, the stuff's all on the wall. It's on the wall and I can't do anything more about it. And I love it. Yeah, I love that. I love this stuff. I have to, I have to kind of take a walk away, you know, because I think, like, oh dear, you know, people might, you know, people are seeing, you know, different aspects. But it's all part of it. I mean, it's people see different aspects when I'm singing and stuff. But it's still exciting. Acres of art, it's all art, 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 art. Right around the corner, it's very reasonable. It starts at 250 and it works its way up. It's 500, it's very. I do instalment payments. And I understand the situation, you know. Some of you might have problems with employment. Some of you might not be able to afford a stole or a scarf or a pair of Adidas Samba. kind of just thinking about life saying, what a crap life you know I've, I've done fuck all in my life I've been to art college but I've never been anywhere in my life and I'm not doing anything I'm doing this crappy job and I'm going to break a leg at least I'm going to die or at least I'm going to break a leg you know at the very least from, from you know as I'm going down so I have bars were flying about and I was just tumbling and I've, whatever, however I managed it my arm found something solid and it was a, it was the fourth floor and I held on and I managed to get a foot on a bar and then I myself up and I just sat on the floor and 
my legs were bouncing up and down from nerves and my friend came running up and said, Mick, Mick, Mick. And you know, he came up and I said, oh, and there I was. They gave me a cigarette and, and I thought, fuck it, I've got to do something. And I ended up going abroad for getting a passport and my mate gave me a rucksack and I bullied myself onto a plane and just got out of the country and, and was a wanderer for a few months. I've got three children. I've got a big daughter, she's uh, 31. Amanda, my, my oldest daughter, Devani, my grandson, they live over in Bradford. And then there's my son Sebastian, he's uh, uh, 21. And then there's Isabella, and she's uh, 19. And Kath Murphy over there, partner in crime. Uh, and uh, she has a daughter, Naomi, who's 23. So that's uh, dad, granddad, eldest of seven. I plan to sort of be a, a good Catholic dad and, and you know, till death is your part and, and watch them grow steady. And then suddenly that wasn't happening, you know, the fucking the plan just exploded in flames. And I, I'm thinking, well, I'm not going to run away from my kids because I love them, you know, so I said, I'm going down the road. Separated man, do the best you can. You haven't cleaned your towels all year And your curtains are grey Since you went away But you'll never have to go to b and Q again I pray every day, yeah And I go to Mass when I went to Mass this morning And I'm sitting there with, with about six or, six or seven old women in a church on a Monday morning and an old club-footed priest down in Armley and uh, we get through half an hour, a quick half hour mass and uh, he sets me up for the day and I've you know, got a mass about you know, once a week but yeah, I say prayers and I think what I've got is, you know, is a gift to, you know, to move people and, uh, and I, th I'm, I just feel happy about my life, you know, I think I thank God I, I can draw and I can see and I can get feel feel happy about the world around me. I can get enthusiastic about lots of stuff. I used to do marathons when I was uh, about you know in the eighties. I did about four marathons and uh, then I got myself my first pair of tracky bottoms when I was about thirty five. <laughs> and, uh, and my mate says, "Go on, have a go at a marathon." I said, "Why?" Well, my marathon's a lot. He said, yeah, but you're running all the time. You should fucking do it. It's a piece of piss for you. I said, but it's 26 miles. Go on. Yeah. So, so I, I had to go. I ran this And I turned up late for the marathon. Everybody had set off. And I, I was running along. I had my bag of clothes, spare clothes. And I ran with my bag of clothes for about the first five miles. And, and, and the guy said, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm carrying my bag. <laughs> I said, get rid of the bag. <laughs> all the runners say, rid of the clothes of the bag. And I'm going, well, I'm all right. I'll be fine. And, and then I got to kind of a drinks point about five miles into the race and got to this tennis. I said, oh, we'll look after your bag. So I left it in the bag and then carried on running. And I did it in three hours, 11 minutes. So when I go out, I'm either picking stuff up off the street, you know, whatever, little bits of plastic, metal, bits of glass, whatever. <laughs> Paper bags, funny little wrappers, postman's little tags. Or, or I'm just taking pictures and just go out and I just snap things or people. I was out in Burnley one day and there was some guy running along the street in a white shirt and black trousers and he had a couple of cartons of milk and a fag in his gob and he was running along and I sort of went after him I thought I'm going to see if he'll stop. So I, I ran up and I said, excuse me, and then he said, what? I said, uh, would you mind just uh, stopping for a minute? I'm a, an artist and I, I want to take some pictures. I'm doing some images for a big painting I'm doing about this area. This guy says, uh, well listen, I, I've, I've just come from my dad's funeral. And I went, oh, oh, I'm sorry. He says, well, I'll, I'll, I'll stand here if you want. You know? And I said, fine. Then he put the carton of milk. I said, don't, no, keep the carton of milk in your hand. Just do it, just stay, stay right there. And, I'll and I just stand over there, that's it. And I said, thank you. And I just followed some raster guy who was walking on the street, this amazing sort of knitted hat. And I, and I, I said, can I, I ran up and I just tapped him on the shoulder. I said, hello, anyway. I said, I'm an artist. Can I take a picture of you? I'm doing portraits of the area. Anyway. And, and he said, okay. And then and he starts to turn. I said, no, 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 don't turn around. No, I just want to get the back of you. Anyway, 
and he stood there and I took the back of it, this long black leather coat and this woolly hat. And then I said, I've taken it, all right. And off he went. Oh, this man with an amazing suede chamois leather jacket. Uh, and he's, he was walking along, I thought, my God. Yeah, I thought he must have been sort of had, sleeping in sort of in a small box or something for the 20 years or something to get it like that, because it was all wrinkly and it was like quite baggy and sacky. And I, I got him right on the, on the, I ran down, this, I saw him walking along, I thought, get him, get him. And there he was with his like, whatever Daily Mirror stuck in his pocket. And there he was just coming to the corners of the junction. I went, hello. And I said, excuse me, I'm a mick artist here, I'm a painter, and I'm doing a, a, some big, large, abstract painting about this area of Bury, and I need some images to sort of uh, uh, resonate with the picture and, and, and give me some... And, and it, would, you, would, you, would you just stand there and let me take a picture? I went, yeah. <laughs> so I snapped his picture, and he went... <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, look at this. It's on the back of a lorry. It says, doesn't the drive look like a young Burt Lancaster? That was amazing bit of graffiti. Uh, there's a little horse that uh, turns up in one of my songs. A three, it's, I found this little three-legged horse in the street and it had like three legs and uh, the front two legs, somebody had snipped off the, the hoof and the other one was like kind of snip, snipped off at the knee. And I took it home and washed it. As I always do, I wash everything I take on. I wouldn't leave it around with germs and whatever it is because my girlfriend, would be, you know, she says, wash it. If you bring it home, wash it. Make sure it's washed and dried. So I need a bit of comfort every now and again. So when I see something like a little plastic horse or a little dog on the floor, a little broken cup that's in the shape of a moon or something, it kind of gives me a bit of peace. And after I pick it up and I just carry it with me like a little little talisman to just ward off all the nasties until I get home and then I and it usually ends up in the bin. I have my I have my flesh and blood children and I've got my plastic children. And uh, they're happy. Mainly, they're they're all a bit damaged. They're all they've all suffered somewhat. We have got the amputee frog here. Maybe one arm, but he's still quite dapper. He's lost one foot. He's lost one flipper on his feet, and we've got the dogs all right. Perfect. They're perfect little creatures. Fist in a bottle. And we've got, we've got a kind of a half bull here. There we are, one arm, one arm bull. He's still very much alive, you know, he's, he's, he's giving it all he's got, snorting and blowing and stuff, but his, uh, his body's in the fifth dimension, the rest, you know, from the waist down. We've got the skull in a bottle. And that's, that is perfect, you know, it's, it's, it's high fashion. There we go, that's what happens when you, when you, when you, uh, when you get too thin. Heroin sheet gone, gone wrong, that. Most people, that make me laugh, most people are, are inspiring, whether they're fucking inspiring because they're really abusive towards me or whether they're, they're really effusive or say, oh yeah, oh yeah, go on then, yeah. Or indifferent, it doesn't matter because I still get a buzz off kind of just, I'm meeting them and it's up to them if they, you know, they can say yes, no, or whatever, or just ignore me. I'm gonna show you a selection of my million and a half brown paper bags that I've amassed over the years. The ones that I've sold uh, are not with me there on somebody's living room wall. That was a chap in Morley. Oh yes. And he had a pigeon in his jacket. He was sitting with this woman. And he had his, like, a leather jacket on. And he had his hand in his jacket. And I think, what the fuck's he doing? He looked like Napoleon. And after about five minutes of me sitting there drawing him, and he's got a great kind of Irish tinker sort of face, he, this little head popped out of his jacket. And he was a pigeon. And he just put it back in it. <laughs> and just... Look at this chap here. Now he was, uh, he's about 10 years younger than me and he was in some pub in, in uh, down in South Leeds and he had some amazing silver trainers on 
and uh, they just, you know, they drew me to him. Because like, there he was on crutches in trainers. They would look like, stay, you know, right proper top range trainers. It must have cost him like, well, I don't know what they, whatever. But they were silver. And there he was on his crutches. Just <laughs> hobbling. And he was, you know, pain, stick thin. And I got him to sort of stand in the doorway of this pub and I just got him in his trainers. I went all the way down to In fact, I didn't get his trainers in, but I just, I drew him because he was just, you know, the bag go, only goes so far. But that guy there, the wonderful beer, that was in Morley, uh, where that man with the pigeon was. And he had this amazing beard. It was like snow white beard there, but his moustache was yellow from the uh, saliva and the cigarettes and stuff. It's this kind of, a kind of a yellow tinge just there and the rest of it just was like fucking snow white i love them i just love the, the feel of them you know you can put your hand in there's talk I, and i just like the idea of having a bag because it the, the con you know the idea of just a bag is it's uh, it has a backing you've got this you've got this surface image Around the back, you know, what's going on underneath, you know, what's in the back? What's, you know, what's behind the brown paper back? Is it a bottle of whiskey? Is it a dirty mag? Uh, and I just love, love the kind of, the idea of the paper bag and the mystery of it. It means more to me, the life I lead doing it, than the actual presentation in the gallery. Because a paper bag, um, I, I, when I first, when I first drew it, or, or when I first did my first paper bag, I thought, I'm going to draw somebody on a paper bag, and it's their bag. What will they do with it? You know, will they go running off down the street with it? And they put, they put the newspaper in it, and, and they've got my own personal paper bag. Or if somebody runs off with the with the bag and says, "Stop thief! He's got my bag." So I had this, just the, the image that people would play with it, because it's it's your bag. What are you going to do with it? You know, are you going to stick it in, in a, you know in a piece of glass and hang it on the wall, or are you going to do something else with it? Are you going to put your best shirt in it? Your best sort of you know, the, the, your, the shirt that, that somebody gave you as a sort of a love present. You slip it in there and you'll put that pride of place on your shelf. So it's, you know, it's, it's a special paper bag. Oh, I just have a lovely time with somebody for 15, 20 minutes. And um, I get paid for it and then I walk, you know, I go into, I go all over. I go in massage parlours, I go in uh, police stations, libraries, uh, funeral parlours. And I draw people. They say, well, you know, what are you doing in here? I say, well, I'm an artist. And I draw people on paper bags, and and, uh, and they go, yes. I said, well, I'm, I'm actually, this is what I do for a living, and would you like your own personal paper? Well, actually, this is a funeral parlor. You know? and I said, yes, I know, but you know, you've got 15 minutes. Uh, well, all right, then, yeah, would you like a cup of tea? And I make a cup of tea and sit down. And so I've had, say, 20, 25 years of invading people's space and sucking a bit from them. And, and and walking off and just and loving it, you know, just feeling feeling like I've I've made this job for myself. This is what I was this is what I was born to do. To uh, turn up in somebody's house and go da da. <laughs> it's uh, it's all my own work. I've made people like paper bags, or I've made people like straws, or or I don't know, or dipsticks, or. It's because it's things that amuse me and I find a lot of pleasure from them. And, and so I say, look, it's a little three-legged horse. And they all go, oh, yeah, I like that. That's... Starts out of the brown paper bag. Photocopy of the brown paper bag, you get that. Black and white. Virtually identical. But I just like the fact that, you know, there's, there's, they're almost... There's no art involved, almost. And it's just people going, oh, I've got this album. It's just got, it looks, I don't know, because it, like it looks like the previous album. Uh, so I've just, we've got like five albums, all virtually similar kind of artwork. Just, you know, which is, you know, makes me laugh. <sighs> and I've, I've got it in Topman, this amazing sort of towny shop. And um, a weird jacket. And I wore it, you know, years before I started to perform. I used to wear it out on the street, just going down with my paper bags and stuff. And I like to dress up when I'm going to work and freak myself out. I think I'll put something crazy on, and that way I'll get into into a role. 
So I have to sort of psych myself up if I'm going into some rough area. I think I'll put my Turkish pants on tonight with these turned up shoes, the Ara Arabian shoes. Just go on, mate. Off you go. And don't even think about it. Don't even think where you're going. Just go. Clutter, clutter, clutter. I've got millions of scrapbooks. And here's a... Some wire. And I've, I've saved this wire. It says... Um, Blue and yellow wire writing. <laughs> this is a copy of um, Russ Abbott. It's called All Night Holiday. This, I keep it in a box. I have no idea what it sounds like because, as you can see, it's probably it's unplayable. That's me with hair. So, and I always wanted hair like Rod Stewart. I wanted to kind of like be feather cut. You know, and just used to hang down and stuff. And there's no way. Mine was just kind of Irish afro. And I worked like mad to kind of get it to drop and fall on my shoulders, you know, just like yours, but never happened. Hours and hours of pouring whatever, Vaseline on it or butter and stuff. Yeah, let's have a go. Lib Lab Con. It's a little anarchy card I found. We don't need you, we don't want you. Why don't you fuck off? <laughs> I thought I'll keep that. So. <laughs> uh, and here we've got a little message from your daughter, Bella, which is written, which is about four. It says, Bella in the toilet, please wait. Thank you. Sign Bella. <laughs> It's not the biggest crowd in the world. It's not Glastonbury. It's not Woodstock. It's little Germany. Little Germany. They're not going to take over the world. We're not going to come storming through. We're not going to take over Poland. We're little Germany. <laughs> Undercover stuff, it's very guerrilla -y. It's kind of low key, it's gentle, it's acoustic, it's acoustic overthrow. <laughs> Gulliver, he's a big lad. <laughs> Lots of problems at school. Well, we all do. We all sort of think that we if, 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 if we've got certain things like, like money or if we've, got, uh, if we've got a good haircut or if we've got sort of the proper clothes or a nice car or something that we'll be safe, those things will protect us from all the nasty things if we... Uh, but it's not true, you know. It's... you, 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 you get by for all your warts and blemishes. You survive and you don't need spot cream. You'll, you'll get through. Uh, yep. Yeah. Amen. I just found out I've got 44 years to live. All my ambitions have all gone up in smoke Life turned out to be just a tragic joke I just found out I've got 44 years to live I could have been a deacon, a Mohican I could have been a philanthropist Or a doctor, or a chef, or a, a lorry driver, you know Riding down the road with a Yorkie Oh, wow, wow, wow. Oh, just riding down the road with a Yorkie beside. 